welcome to my allotment. Today I'm going to be showing you what I'm harvesting in the month of April. It's the beginning of April here. There isn't an awful lot on my allotment, but uh, there are still some things that I'm harvesting now. Some things have just started to, um, you know, form the fruit and vegetables that I can eat, and some things I've overwintered. So first of all, I'm going to start with rhubarb. Now rhubarb is incredibly easy to grow and most allotment holders have one. I'd recommend you have one unless you really don't like it. But it's something that I quite like. You can make lots of jams and preserves. Um, sometimes I just cook it to have with my breakfast. You can make crumbles. You can even have it with things like mackerel. So you can pickle it as well. So if you look up some recipes, it is actually quite versatile. So, you know, mine's obviously doing really, really well. You wouldn't be pulling this if it wasn't looking as healthy as this is now but this is looking absolutely wonderful so it's perfectly okay to pick it and um, so you're looking for the nice big thick stems and you go right down to the bottom and you kind of gently twist and pull to get it out because you don't you don't snap them off that's the really important thing you've never you do pull rhubarb um, so from the bottom gently twist and it comes out really easy if you just try and yank it it's really hard it's like it's kind of like grabbing the ground but if you gently go right down to the base of the plant, gently twist it and it will come out in its entirety and that will be perfect. So I'm pulling some, this is something that even if you don't want it, it's really good to share with friends and family when you want a favour. You know, it's a bit like Marmite, some people really love it and some people really hate it. Um, but it's something that, that we quite like and we use quite regularly. And it's one of, and unfortunately sometimes an extra one comes out which is, just one of those things it's no bad you're going to get plenty there what you don't do is you never pick it bare so i spoke about this before you would never completely clear the plant because that's when it could struggle you just take what you need and keep coming back for more and always take the biggest stems at the beginning of the season it's always the tastiest it's always the sweetest even if you've not forced it i always find it's always the pinkest it's always the sweetest so it's a really lovely time of year to be eating it um, and to be doing whatever you want to do with it. So, as we move around, it's quite windy here today, by the way. You know, obviously there's lots of things that I can't pick yet because they're all still growing, all the fruit, all just dead and sprouting. You know, the garlics are coming along nicely, but they're not, uh, by any chance of the imagination, ready for me to start digging. The kale is something that I've overwintered, and I spoke about this in other videos. It gets to the point where it starts to go to seed, like mine has here. So it's got to come up. You know, what happens when it goes to seed is the um, leaves will start to taste more bitter. Um, so I'll do a couple of things. I'm gonna basically pull all this now and I'll either put it on my composter, feed it to my chickens, or some of the leaves I will actually eat myself. What I'll do is the ones that haven't gone to seed quite so badly, like say that one there, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe cook those. But you know, it's a simple way of testing whether they're okay or not. Might be a bit unpleasant but they will taste more bitter and if you think they're too bitter to eat then obviously don't eat them they won't cause you any harm but it's just not very nice but if i was going to try any the ones like that that have bolted a lot i probably wouldn't bother with that i'd give it to my chickens but one like that that's only just bolted that'd be the one that i'll pull the leaves off and i'll actually eat myself but like i said it's come to that time of year where they all just need to come up and i probably need my fork to get that up but yeah you either want to pull them up or you want to lift them up with a fork because basically other things are going to be going in this area so apart from anything else even if these weren't bolting i'd need to get these cleared because i'm going to have other crops that are going to come in this place kale is one of those really um, useful things to have on your allotment as well um, it, you get um, kale off of it for lots and lots of months of the year because it's literally you pull it and more grows it's very very versatile one of our favorite things is crispy kale but you can do all sorts of things with it you can just steam it boil it um, you can saute it down you can put it in stews curries all sorts of things it's incredibly versatile and very very nutritious so as we move down I've got my overwintering onions which again they're not ready to pull yet so I can't lift those um, I've got my potatoes in over there and obviously they're going to be some months away before I can harvest those what I'm going to be digging up the rest of a bit like the kale are the parsnips now I honestly don't know what these parsnips are like down here but it's my tail end and it's the same situation with the kale they need to come up and also um, you know, I need, what well, I need to, I'm going to be planting stuff here. I need to be getting the ground ready for what's going to be going in. You know, and they're not going to do an awful lot more now. So the ground's a little bit hard. So I'm going to pull it down nice and deep. You know, and I, 
have some not bad ones there look you know I'll basically pick out the better ones and I'll eat the ones that are worth eating um, so yeah not too bad there we go they're not the biggest parsnips in the world um, but there's plenty you can do with with a parsnip you can just roast it boil it mash it uh, really nice in soups curries you can even make puddings with them I've had a really nice um, toffee and parsnip pudding before which is really really tasty so this in the, and also some of these things you've got to have some stuff that overwinters otherwise you'll have nothing to eat during the during the you know over the winter and you'll have to buy everything from your supermarket and then the whole point is that you know you try and feed yourself as much as you can from your allotment so the other thing that I've got which is going to be the first time I've actually pulled it so this is something that's been overwintering but isn't ready till spring is my savoy cabbage so these have been sitting under here very nicely all throughout the winter so the reason I cover it is just purely the birds are in here. That's one of the things. And look, I've got some lovely ones there. There's that one there in particular, which I'll take that one to cook. Let's see if I can get it out. Might need to fork on that too. No, there we go. Savoy cabbage. There we go. It's not. It's not the biggest one in the world, but it's perfectly good enough to feed my family for a few days. Um, I quite like the savoy cabbage because I quite like the texture of the leaves. You know, again, you could do lots of things with that. Boil it, steam it, saute it. You could even put it in a coleslaw if you wanted a bit more texture in the coleslaw. So there's lots of things you can be doing with that. I'd love to hear what you're harvesting at the moment, um, what you've got left and what you particularly enjoy growing over the winter months and what you find more productive actually, because that's what it comes down to. You want it actually to produce lots of food for your table. So I do hope you've enjoyed my April harvest, even though it's not as bountiful as my um, harvests will be over the coming months. Um, and it'll be great to hear what you're doing. Doing.